All right, welcome back. Okay, now that we notice we can only move to the right, let's see what's wrong in my character. So, okay, immediately, I, I see I forgot to move this oh, node from before. So let's drag these here and remove those nodes connecting back to the, the other axis. So we're basically, we're just applying axis twice. So uh, let's just clean this up a little bit. And that'll be it. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Now let's save. Compile. And let's go back. Now let's try this. Or you go here, and go left, and go right. And that's great. See, now you can just go all over the ball. But there's another another problem. We're just flying anywhere we want. And I'm pretty sure we're not on a wall. But I could be wrong. So let's go back into here. And we're going to apply a new rule. Now this rule is going to check for walls, but it's also going to check and apply rotation. A single line trace by channel, or line trace by channel. Connect this here, and then we're going to get our actor's location. Connect that to the start. Now we want to add to our actor's location for the end. So we're going to connect that first. Now let's get our actor's rotation. And then our right vector. And then we're going to multiply this by a float. And that float is going to be our right movement. So let's do right movement. And then we're going to multiply this by 50. So you know, we get 50 units in front of the direction that we're going, or that the player is going, I should say. And connect that here, just pull that up. And let's connect this to there. Great. Now, now that we have that check going, we want to do something with the results of this check. So let's do a branch to first check if anything has happened. And what we're going to do when something like this happens or when a trace hits is the trace is hitting a wall that's either to the left or to the right of us. And so that means we want to update our character's rotation to now sit on that wall. And this will also go to updating our, our character's uh, lo end location so that we can now move on that wall. And so let's um, go to setting our actor's rotation. We want to break the hit result. From the normal, we want to get x vector. And we we'll want to connect this here. Now, I already know what happens, but we're just going to do it here. We're going to rotate this. And what the reason we're doing this is because the character is rotated backwards when you just pull the rotation from the, the normal. So rotating it 180 allows you to have the character s sit on the wall like Spider-Man. And so let's connect this to true. And this will now be connected to the trace that's down here. So let's actually pull this trace a little bit forward in the chain. And we get 
pull out and drag that forward as well. So now this connects here, and this also connects here. So if nothing happens, still we want this to be updated so that we know if we're on a wall or not. We always want to check if we're on a wall. So after the rotation is updated, are we still on the wall? And that's just how we're, we're going to do it. And so one thing we also want to check here is if we're no longer on the wall, we should tell them to fall off the wall. Not just tell them that they can no longer be on the wall or the wall is no longer there. So what I do is connect here and that turns off wall climbing. And so now you just kill two birds with one stone. Coo, coo, coo. Let's do this. Uh, let's drag the wall climbing boolean out here. I'm going to create a branch at the top. And copy this, paste this, drag at the bottom, connect the condition, control drag to true, control drag to true, connect this, connect this, and just push that up, save, compile, and save all. Let's go back. Play. Now, I still got that trace on, so I'm just going to go and turn that off really quickly. For duration, none. Save, compile, back to map, play. Let's go and game. Now we got that notification. You press E, we can go left. Oh, what? What's going on? I can't. What's happening? Okay, well, something. The reason it keeps falling off is because it, we're still using the add movement and write movement uh, inputs. So what we should do is actually do a select vector. Let's pull this node here forward just a bit. Connect that there. Now we want our default to be in the B. So let's control click that. Let's copy this node, paste. You want our default to be B, and then return value to be in the world direction. Now for the pick A, again, we want this to be the wall climbing. Because when the wall climb is on, we don't want input to necessarily happen. But what I usually do is get the up vector, and I just apply that. Really, you can apply none. Or this is where you, you probably get into the business where you start using your animation blueprint. So let's save the pile. Hit play. Let's try this out. So there you go. Left, right movement. Fall off the wall. Let's try to connect to this wall to our right. And it connects. Look at that, pop in action, pop, 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 pop in action. And then you fall off the wall. And it's great, it's, it's slightly accurate, you know, it's a, uh, I wouldn't suggest using it everywhere. I would definitely suggest modifying this more, but you can see it sticks on there fairly well. It can definitely be done better and improve more. But hopefully th this gives you a good idea of what you can do and what to do next. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. I'm just letting you know as well that this is only the first addition to the wall climbing, and we're going to do the wall walking and everything else next. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one tutoring within Blueprint, I would love to teach you how I apply object-oriented design to my Blueprint to make it more efficient and easy to use. My email is on the screen. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Peace.